Well, for more on President Assad's remarks, I'm joined now from Capitol Hill by Democratic Senator Chris Coons, who sits on the Foreign Relations Committee. Senator Coons, you were listening to that interview with President Assad. What did you make of him? He strikes me as somebody who seems very confident. Uh, that was a truly stunning interview, Caddy. Um, the delusion involved in his denial of the reality of barrel bombs, the seeming indifference to the huge suffering of his people, uh, the millions of displaced, the nearly 200,000 uh, casualties, largely instigated by Assad, by his regime, uh, that is responsible for using chemical weapons, barrel bombs, torture, every possible weapon against his own people, not just in a war, as he suggested, against terrorists and extremists, but against his own people, who began with peaceful demonstrations against his regime. Uh, it was a striking denial of responsibility or even knowledge of the techniques used by his own army to oppress and kill his own people. Senator, in March of last year, that's now almost a year ago, you wrote a letter along with some other senators to President Obama saying that you needed to alter Assad's calculus so that he no longer believes he can remain Syria's ruler. That was almost a year ago. He's still Syria's ruler. Our efforts have failed, haven't they, in that respect? Well, our core national interest here is in preventing Syria from becoming a failed state from which terrorists can attack the United States and our vital allies. Uh, and I will say that our long-term goal as a country has been to secure a negotiated settlement to Syria's brutal civil war that includes the departure of Assad uh, from leading the country forward. It has become a more impacted and a more difficult conflict and the emergence of ISIS, which I think is a direct result of Assad's action against his own people, has complicated it further. As you said at the outset, ending the killing is one of our principal goals ending the killing in a way that leads to a more stable and secure future for the Syrian people is an admirable and a necessary goal as well. How much of a problem, though, is it for the American-led coalition that Assad is still in power? Because many of you, as you know full well, many of our allies in the region see Assad as a much bigger problem, perhaps at the moment, than the United States does. That is a real challenge for our coalition, the difference internally on strategy towards Assad. But as long as we remain focused on the war against ISIS, the shared, proximate, most present threat, I think the coalition will be strong and will be successful. The suggestions by Assad in passing that there's some sort of coordination uh, with the U.S. military, I think, has already been debunked uh, by the administration. But let me just add my voice to that point, that we're not coordinating with Assad in our war against ISIS, and that I think the United States Senate and the United States people are united in supporting our administration in the very hard and important work in the months and years ahead to defeat ISIS. And would you say, if you were writing this letter today to the president, that he must still go? I think that Assad has on his hands the blood of hundreds of thousands of his own people. And I think any peaceful future for Syria, a moderate, a democratic, a peaceful future, has to include Assad's departure from the scene. I do think, though, that a core lesson of our long war in Iraq is that to completely destroy, to allow the destruction of all military and civil and civic infrastructure in Syria would be equally deadly. We have to make sure we don't have a scenario that leads to a failed state but instead have a scenario that leads to a responsible transition away from Assad's leadership of this country and of his brutal military. Okay, Senator Coons, thank you very much for joining me from Capitol Hill. Thank you, Hill. Ken.